Trauma and unconscious beliefs. What are they? Why is it so important to heal them? And how they are affecting your life right now without you even knowing it. Let's get into it because this is a fun su- this is a fun conversation to have. My name is Chelsea and thank you so much for tuning in. I am an intuitive healer and I help people transform trauma and fear-based patterns into love and empowerment. And this is really the bread and butter of my business, trauma and unconscious beliefs. This is what I see people with every day going through and this is what I see going on in the world. I mean, really, if 2020 taught us nothing, it made us look at our traumas, it made us look at our beliefs, it made us look at what we think we believe but really didn't. It blew everything up in our faces. And when you have not healed trauma and have not healed and changed your unconscious beliefs, it will guide you down a wacky roller coaster of a path without really allowing you to control and take charge of your life, which is, I think, what a lot of us are really wanting right now. So firstly, trauma is, first of all, if you have experienced trauma in your life, I don't care if it's a massive, oh my gosh, trauma or a trauma that maybe you think isn't a trauma but was traumatic for you, or if it's something that somebody else says was not traumatic but it was traumatic. A trauma is anything that your brain cannot cope with in the moment. So it creates a defensive little bubble and a little defensive like kind of capsule to set it aside until you can deal with it. That's a trauma. So for whatever trauma you have experienced, my heart goes out to you. And I am sending you all the love and all of the care and all of the healing that I possibly can because it's no joke. And a lot of us are being faced with our traumas right now. And it can be a rough road. So just know that I love you and I'm rooting for you. Now, like I said, trauma is something that has happened to you that your brain forms this little cocoon around and sets it aside on a shelf in the back of your brain until you're ready to deal with it, which is a very good survival practice. However, once that event is over and a certain amount of time has passed to where we now have the capacity to deal with it and we decide not to, that's where it starts to run our lives. Our trauma will, and this is a psychological fact, it's a spiritual fact, our trauma doesn't go away just because we say, okay, no, 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 you're in the past, stay there, you're good, we're just, we're just gonna, you know, put that in a box, label it for later, shove it on the shelf, close the door behind it, and then, you know, board up the door. It doesn't go away. What trauma will do is it will unconsciously guide you into situations that will repeat the same kind of hurt that was experienced in that trauma. So that way you're forced to go in that closet, open that box and go, okay, let's let's heal this, let's acknowledge this. It's like that annoying little thing. I don't even know, I, I don't even have a metaphor for it, but it's, like that annoying little friend of yours that says, hey, uh, you remember remember when you said we'd have coffee? Can, can we have coffee now? It, no? Okay, boom, narcissistic relationship. Yeah, feeling similar to when you were. Can we talk now? No? Okay, boom, narcissistic boss. Can we have coffee now? And until you agree to have coffee and deal with that trauma and heal it, it's just going to keep leading you into shit show after shit show after shit show. Now, what I mean by that is you, it's, our trauma often defines who we are attracted to. Our trauma often dictates the fireworks. So when you meet somebody and you go, oh my God, we just had this amazing connection it's like fireworks went off and we were just 
bonded. That's your trauma, honey. More likely than not. Now, there is such things as instant connection with people, but usually it feels a lot more steady, a lot more peaceful, a lot more open, a lot more just like, yeah, that felt really good. I'd love to see where this goes. But when it becomes an intense, fiery, and this is with relationships, friendships, working relationships, if it's something intense, that is your trauma saying, yes, go to that person because they're going to make you feel the way that you felt when this trauma happened and then we're gonna deal with this, right, right? (laughs) So to avoid that and to get off of that little treadmill, we have to heal our trauma. And doing that is a scary process to most of us because we really don't want to go back there. I understand. And I know. So I always recommend, if you know, if this video has helped you understand or if you've been told by many, many people or if even you've been telling yourself, I need to go back and heal some trauma but don't know where to start, always start in a safe space with somebody who is trained to hold space for you. A therapist, a hypnotherapist and healer like myself, somebody who is professionally trained to hold the space and help you diffuse that bomb. Because a lot of people decide not to heal their trauma, I believe, because it's kind of like, it is like setting off a bomb. And now once that bomb has been set off, and you get through the rough part of facing the trauma, then you're free. But it can be a lot easier and a lot less painful and a lot more gentle and a lot more effective to work with somebody who knows what you're going through or can help guide you through what you're going through. So that's trauma. Now, unconscious beliefs, on the other hand, are something that, A, can be formed by trauma A lot of people who have experienced abusive relationships in their past have very, very harmful unconscious beliefs due to that trauma. So you'll see many people who experienced abuse in their past saying, I'm not worthy of more. This is all I deserve. I'm ugly. I'm not talented. I don't have anything to offer the world. And that... That just breaks my heart. If you are feeling that, again, my heart goes out to you. Because those beliefs were not meant for you. Those beliefs were implanted by somebody else. And that's the key. That's one of the key things about harmful unconscious beliefs is for the most part, they were given to us. When we were born, we were born perfect. We were born with the capacity for all the knowledge and all the good and all the love in the world. And then we started listening to people because we had to, right? We had to learn how to be a human from other older humans who already had their whole lives worth of beliefs that they've created or beliefs that were given to them or traumas. So we inherit these wacky lenses to view the world through. So with unconscious beliefs, they will affect how we see the world. Sometimes quite literally visually see the world. One of the more common relationship beliefs is there's just nobody left out there. There's just nobody good left out there for me. Which means that if that is a belief that's running the background programs of your mind and your heart, the perfect person, just the most kind, love-radiating, shiny soul of a human could bump into you at a coffee shop and say, hey, do you mind sitting down with me for a sec? Or, hey, would you like to have coffee? And you would not even take the time to see them. Your brain would literally redirect you to say, yeah, but let's check out this exciting toxic person over here because there's nobody good left. So this person right in front of me must not exist. 
And it's amazingly weird how powerful our brains are that it can do that, right? It's like looking in the fridge and you're looking for the ketchup and you cannot find the ketchup for the life of you. Have you ever had that experience where you're like, there's no ketchup. What? I cannot find the ketchup. Babe, where's the ketchup? And then they like some come, they come in and grab the ketchup from right in front of your face and say, here, that's what unconscious beliefs do to us. It literally takes the ketchup out of our range of vision. As you can tell, I'm a ketchup person, not a mustard girl. I don't know why. So with unconscious beliefs, the key difference and one of the beautiful things about them is they can actually be changed. Sometimes it's difficult to change a belief. Sometimes it's difficult to change an idea. Sometimes it requires looking at the world in a new way, which is why a lot of us feel safer to not change our beliefs. A lot of us feel safer at first to say, well, yeah, maybe thinking that there's no good people left out there isn't doing me any good, but I'm not going to change it. Because that would require a challenge and that would require the death of that belief. And that little belief, let me tell you, is going to hang on for dear life at first. It's going to kick and scream and say, no, 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 you need me. You need this belief to stay safe. You need the belief that there is nobody good left out there so that you don't get hurt. But if we have the courage to step beyond that and say, this is not working for me anymore, we can change that belief into whatever we like, which is a really powerful thing because you really can't change what happened in the past in the, in the sense of trauma. We can heal the wound that it's created. We can heal the emotions that we associate so strongly with it. We can heal the fact that every time we get put into a situation, that trauma comes up and makes us react viscerally to it. But we can't really change what happened in the past. With a belief, sky's the limit. We can change that to whatever we like. So... That is a little bit about trauma, a little bit about unconscious beliefs. And if you are struggling with either or both of those and need help and need a place to start, please like and subscribe to this video. Um, book your free one-on-one -on -one call with me because I would love to see how I can help you with changing these things for the better to become a force of power in your life, to become a force of strength in your life, rather than something that's holding you back. If this video served you, please like it, share it, and until next time, I love you all.